Act on WHP6. Join me, Ron Stevens, as we count down the top 20 hits of a featured week and hear lots of bonus hits from that memorable decade. So listen to the Super 70s on 90.3 WHP6, the voice of Nassau Community College. The Super 70s, Tuesday at 12 a.m. and Saturday at 7 a.m. on 90.3 WHPC. Hi, this is Michael Anthony. Join me every Saturday from 7 to 10 p.m. for the best of traditional jazz and American popular standards. The vocalists, musicians, arrangers, and composers are always celebrated each week with artist profiles and special guests. It's a celebrated musical art form that is alive and well. So tune in every Saturday from 7 to 10 p.m. for The Unforgettables on WHPC 90.3 FM, the voice of Nassau Community College, the station that gives you music, memories, and so much more. Is looking for individuals, businesses, charities, or organizations in our local and global community that would like to donate to support our radio station. Whether you listen locally or online, here is how it works. Go to our webpage at ncc.edu slash whpc and click Donate Now. Or if you prefer, you can send a check to WHPC Radio, One Education Drive, Garden City, New York, 11530. Make check payable to the NCC Foundation. In the memo of your check, write WHPC Donate Now. Any contributions will help defray our operating costs and it's tax deductible. This message was brought to you by the radio voice of Nassau Community College. Streaming online at ncc.edu slash whpc. Tune in Wednesdays at 12.30 p.m. for The Media Project. Featuring lively discussion and spirited debate, The Media Project is an inside look at media coverage of current events with the Times Union's Rex Smith, WAMC's Alan Chartok, University of Albany professor Rosemary Armeo, and Daily Freeman publisher emeritus Ira Fussfeld. That's Wednesdays at 12.30 p.m. on 90.3 FM, WHPC, and streaming at ncc.edu slash WHPC. WHPC! Addicting to the motor mouth. Hello. 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 You guys are the best. Man, you guys are insane, hilarious, and the best stuff I've ever seen. That's right. Chris and Ray. Motor mouth. <laughs> Can I win anything? I got through. I can't believe I got through. Well, I'm glad you guys are around because I didn't even know you existed. Hey, how are you, motor mouth? This is one of those days, nothing to do, so I figure why not spend it with a couple of nobodies. Motor mouth. You also have my picture up on the webpage. Boy, you taught me something about that car. Why must you ask such difficult questions? Motor mouth. I don't know too much about motors. Do I come running into your show? We love you guys that have these shows. Our trained staff of two will help. Is this that jerky car show that I listen to? Are you the distributed cat? Am I on the poor team dancer? Quite frankly, there are better things to do with your time. <laughs> Trying to dial the phone with transmission fluid all over me. So I finally got a chance to listen to you guys streaming. I'm in a good mood. I'm happy. Yeah, I want to know what the <laughs> is wrong with my car. I haven't even called my own mechanic back, but why don't I ask you? But you guys are, uh, are pretty special guys. Vote about. Must be a motorcycle thing, because I'm not familiar with that. Yes. Yeah. Let's just think right now. Murphy's Law, what's going to go wrong? Is the board going to explode? Is the mic going to drop? Is my phone going to drop? I love live radio. I'm just having some fun with you guys. There are answers, sometimes correct ones, and we may have them. Northern Mouth Radio, 90.3 FM, WHTC. Vote them out! This is Motormouth Radio, your one-hour automotive talk show. And now, here are your Motormouths, Chris Switzer and Ray Guarino. All right. The longer you listen, the more we're amazed. This is Motormouth Radio, your one-hour automotive talk show, right here on Long Island. I'm Chris Switzer, and of course, he's a long one here. Oh, Here's a man who doesn't need to take nine months to do a one-hour program like Stephen Colbert. No, sir. Sometimes it takes him nine weeks, or nine days, or even nine minutes. Sometimes he looks at me while the intro music is playing and says, What do you want to talk about? And that takes about nine seconds. Well, here he is. It doesn't matter how long it takes. It just matters that he gives you the best hour of radio right behind the shop bench. You know him as Ray Guarino. How are you, my brother? Good, Chris, and thank you. It's nice to be back. 
after my uh, slight hiatus on Sunday. And That's right. Got to thank Joe D for doing a bang up job filling in for me. God knows it isn't easy working with you. <laughs> he was and he Joe was Dave, doing yeoman service like a pro. Yes, like a yeoman. Yes. <laughs> but uh, I got to say, you know, it is now post Labor Day. Right. So that means it's no longer. Apropos for you to wear the white disco suit, you should take it off, please. Come on, you could wear white pants after Labor Day. It's uh, it, nah. Miss Manners let's, gives you a pass. But I'll tell you what is now de rigueur for after Labor Day. What? It is now okay to have anything pumpkin flavored. And Dunkin' Donuts has already come out with their pumpkin coffees and lattes, and others are following trends. We're so freaking far ahead. Do you know my wife was at Walmart the other day to find a folder for my daughter because she's in college. Walmart took the school supplies out already. What? Yeah. <laughs> now it's all Halloween and Thanksgiving. School su- it's September. <laughs> I swear. Yeah, wait till you see what you're in for with school supplies. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun. I don't know what you're talking about, young Pumpkin man. Pumpkin-flavored school supplies. I, but listen. I still have to go through all the stores and try and pass through all the Christmas stuff that you see yeah, in the exactly. of shelves. I know, right? <laughs> well, you can't pass through this because we have a great show today. We were yes, supposed we to have our good friend, confidant, and robotic cheats, Bill, Billy G. from Whitestone, call us today. I know. What what happened? I guess his phone broke because he walked into the studio. <laughs> there he is. Billy G. Billy, Billy Velvet here from the Retro Garage. How are you, mighty? Hello, man. Good to be here. Thank you. Thanks for coming in, Bill. Yes. It's always nicer to do an interview in person than it is on the phone. Very true. Because we can make facial expressions. And we can poke you with things. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you could be seen on vonlive.tv slash motormouth radio right there. So much for my claim to being a witness protection. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, not well, here, not now. No one knows where the studio is. So <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. And no one's listening anyway. So oh, yeah. Yeah. Bunker in Wyoming, an old bomb shelter down there somewhere. <laughs> So if you want to ask Billy a call, or if you have a question about your car, 516-572-7440 is your phone number. It's like, you know, people always have trouble work, walking around the Saturn V rockets that we have <laughs> yeah, to clear yeah. in the hallway. <laughs> and they wonder, what are these things doing here? Ah, surplus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you walk by the, all the radiation. You, Cigar tubes. Right, your hair falls off your arms. It's awful. You should try that. I know. <laughs> Maybe I should. 516-572-7440. So, Billy, how you been? I'm, I'm well, gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, today I decided... Uh, to take the day because uh, you were hanging out with a bunch of nobodies. Logistically, <laughs> one of those days, nothing to do, so I figured I'd spend it with a couple of nobodies. Just there you go. <laughs> no, but, see, but uh, seriously, it was a matter of running around and logistics for the car show that we'll talk yeah. about. Uh, yes. at, you know, trophies, porta johns, mm-hmm. uh, sound permits, cannolis. Yeah. I like you yeah, put the port- you, Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. You put the trophies in the Porter <laughs> Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. That's good. I was gonna call in, like you said, but I was up by uh, a good friend uh and I you know, this is the plug day. Uh mm-hmm. Tommy mm-hmm. Adams at Mineola Trophy up on Jericho Turnpike. Nice. Tommy does uh does our trophies every year with our dash plaques and sponsor plaques. Unique mm-hmm. in that we actually take the uh the screen that we shoot which is the logo for the T-shirts. And Tommy makes them into the plates for the plaques, mm-hmm. and it's uh, we're the only show that really does it that way. Mm. So, but Very Tommy good. Adams, thanks, Tom. I know you're out there listening. Very nice. So, what is the theme for the show this year? Right, that we're going to be talking about very soon. The theme we're going with the uh, it's basically the guys, the grassroots guys that have had cars. You know, not in a matter of a couple of years, but I mean, you're going back, guys. Same cars, ten, fifteen years. 30, 40 constantly, years. Mm-hmm. and yeah. then yes, and then, then constantly tweak them, work on them. And this year the theme was is a uh, we got the three gases. We got Stevie Gasser, Gasser mm-hmm. Steve as we call him, uh, him and his wife Tracy with the Tempest Corvette, and then we got Billy Quinton with the uh, right. the pickup truck. The uh, forty. Uh, It'd be nice to see the pickup Chevy in the pickup. show instead of out blocking Correct. the road as, as we saw <laughs> the last couple of years. Cause that's Correct. a beautiful truck. Right. Yeah. Correct. Very nice. So it's going to be a gasser theme. A gasser theme, but also the homegrown guys, uh, the secret committee of uh, that'll go around and spot uh, an mm-hmm. interview, and we're going to pick out uh, basically, hopefully, the homegrown guys that right. continue to tweak the, their cars. Well, that's what got me in, besides the 50 I sl- slipped in your back pocket that night. <laughs> um, and yeah, speaking of interviews, you've been gracious enough to set me up with a, a bird's eye perch to do interviews with, yes. with people. So we're going to be doing interviews on the fly at the show. Very nice. And then we'll we'll boil them down and we'll use them on future shows Absolutely. with Motormouth Radio. Right. Sunday, we're going to be, this is, this is the Malva show that's going on this Sunday. 
Right. And we're doing, Ray and I will be doing split service because mm-hmm. Ray is going to be with you at the show doing, uh, doing interviews, and I will be uh, standing vigil here on the air with Joe D., our, right. our, our technical spiritual guide as well, and our man in the clouds. I'll will be, be high above the show field watching people throw the McDonald's wrappers in my back seat. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, what's, oh, this must be the receptacle. <laughs> Well, it's like Billy says, you know, grassroots. Your car was in the grass for how many years? I thought it was in the garage, really. Uh, but yeah, yeah. But well, yeah the, there were some roots in it when I took it out. <laughs> and grass has something to do with it and throughout mice. the years you've owned it. Yeah. Mm. Well, well <laughs> you're not, you know, there's, so it's a good theme, Billy. Yeah. And, and, the, and the show, uh, I'm back as the chairman. This is the 15th year. <laughs> you can't it's The leave. 14th show in 15 years. We, we took a break back. after 9-11. We, didn't yeah. wanna, we wanted to honor the memory. Sure. Uh, mm. So we didn't do a show. So that, hence, we started in 2000. This is 2015, 14 shows. Mm-hmm. Next year will be our 15th anniversary show. I already have the theme. We're going to salute wow. the 9-11. <laughs> okay. Because wow. the show is actually going to be on September 11th. So oh, we're okay. better treated than to do uh, 9-11 first responders. Well done. Bill, give us, give us an overview of the show. Because I've tried to reiterate uh, to people what the, the history. And I, I remember pieces of it, but I never remember all of it because I didn't live it with you guys. The, the show started not as a car show back in the 60s. Right. Wasn't it, had, it? it had humble Actually, beginnings. It started in 58. Oh, 58. Bill, right. Bill Maggio Sr. and Dr. G. Avine. Dr. G. Avine was a Commodore. Uh, it was basically a back to school party for the children. Okay. Hot dog party. Weenie roast, they called it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and hence the uh, show continued and then started to thin out as kids get older, of course, and then the next generation. Uh, there's not as many uh, children, or hence the the show mm. dwindled down to an hour and a half event uh, oh, wow. at the at the uh, Pierce Circle. Yeah. And, and, and what use it? Did someone park the the it was a Buick or Oldsmobile at the at the end of the, at the corner there with filled with toys? What year was that? That that was, started in fifth. That was started in fifty eight. That was in the beginning. Okay, in the very beginning, and and having grown up in the neighborhood. It was a big deal to win a, an event and then go to Mr. Maggio's trunk. Yeah. And, of course, get the model car kits. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and you've been liking Oldsmobiles ever since. Yeah, right. just, let's go to the phones. Let's go to the fun. Let's say hi you're on with the Motormouths and Bill Giaccio from the Retro Garage. How are you? Hey, guys. Guess who? Surprise, surprise. Hey, hey, hey. It's the Bronc, our uh, West Coast uh, dust correspondent and uh, desert uh, inspector. How are you? I'm doing good. <laughs> Talking about car shows, and over here we're starting to wind down. For some reason, they closed the shows down by middle of September, and the weather out here is the perfect time of the year. It's not hot, none of that nonsense. Mm-hmm. And then for some reason, everybody packs up by uh, middle of September. So there's sounds only like two shows left. Brock, got sound- one today, which is uh, one of my favorites. <laughs> you know, as you know, time. I work down at the Harrods Collection at the Car Museum. Right. And uh, they have the volunteer show. And I'm the baby, so to speak, <laughs> at my age, <laughs> for the rest of these guys. You talk about dust rolling out of the highways. Right? When these guys walk around, they're passing dust. <laughs> right? well, I was gonna, uh, my thought was, I think it's time for you to get on the planning committee for the car show season, and maybe you can help inch it along a little bit more into yeah. uh, late September, October. Well, the problem we're having over here now is that there's a, and all due respect, that we have a bunch of women that are on the committees now, Okay. And they're trying to convert these car shows into crafts fairs. <laughs> so they're, they're playing down the cars, and they're building up the crafts. So uh, I don't know. Let's see what's going to happen. But it's usually an interesting show because the majority of these cars, they're, not ret- they're retro cars, but they're all in original condition. Right. And the only bad thing about the car shows out here, and probably back east too, you don't get the teenagers, the 20-year-olds coming to look at these cars and appreciate what's involved in keeping an original car, keeping an original condition car. Well, they're too busy now, modifying that. you know, Honda Civics. Yeah, right. That, that's going to be the interesting part. Twenty years from now, you're going to go to these shows and you're going to see this 1990 Honda Civic with a big fart muffler yeah. and a big kid. <laughs> and <laughs> it's going to be restored. <laughs> right. A restored Honda Civic. Yeah, exactly. They're going to restore those. You're going to restore so that Pontiac Sunbird. Yeah, like you guys are doing. You, mm-hmm. uh, I wish there was a way of getting more interest and more younger people to appreciate what these cars have to offer and the changes made in our society. 
Yeah, unless you've got neon wrapped around it and it's you know yeah. got music pumping out of it, they're, they're not going to be interested. But, you know, you can do that with an old car. And it always takes me back to when we had the Exceeding Limits guys on in the beginning, and we asked them why. I think, Chris, you asked them, why are you guys building trucks? Why aren't you building muscle cars? And they said, you guys have all the muscle cars. We can't afford them. Right. So we're building what we can afford. And I think that's the answer with the tuna crowd, too. Probably, yeah. Yeah, it has a lot to do with it. And there's also, with the newer cars, there's a lot more parts available. To try to find an original part to put an original car together that's in really good condition, that's mm-hmm. whether rebuildable or restorable, is getting rarer and rarer and rarer. Sure is. You know, it's just that uh, has a lot to do with it also. And also that these kids weren't brought up with the old stuff. A lot of them, what's a distributor? What's a set of points? Right? How do you tweak a carburetor? They're going to have to learn that all over again. Yeah, they, half of them don't even know what those words mean. Yeah, right? I've forgotten <laughs> half that stuff. <laughs> you, you know, Bronk, Joe, uh, Joe D. just sent me an email today that had a link to it, and it was a great topic for the show. We've talked about it before. It's about telemetrics, and it's about uh, with newer cars, cars from the 80s and 90s, which are now in the scrap pile because the electronics fail and can't be rebuilt. And exactly. like body control modules or computers just aren't available. You can get it for a new car, but not mm-hmm. an 89 you know, uh, Monte Carlo or, you know, something like that. It's harder to get those. Right, and it's almost impossible. I know uh, a couple of motorcycles, when they started with the computers on the 80s, uh, especially the Japanese versions, uh, the ignition modules, they're just not available. Where they're aftermarket. And uh, every now and then you might find one on eBay, but you're still dealing with a 30-year-old part. That's right. So a lot of that's the main reason a lot of these cars are going to the boneyard where they're not restorable because of the electronics. I thought the an- part of the answer was you can now take, of course, you can put a crate engine in anything, but a lot right. of the well, manufacturers like Edelbrock and Holly and uh, Fast, what they're doing is they're making modern-day electronics along with computers and boxes and harnesses to adapt to those cars. So but now you need a specialty uh, technician to do this because your average mechanic, your average yeah. backboard mechanic, don't understand the electronics involved. Well, yeah, I was no, looking no. on my friend's truck yesterday. He did, uh, it's a resto of a 75 uh, Silverado, mm-hmm. and he bought it from a guy who put a, a 454 in there. And he uh, hooked up a trailer to it, so we had to put the uh, control module for a trailer, you know, for the brake system. So I pulled the dash down. It was a rat's nest wiring nightmare. Yeah. Because people don't know how to wire cars, and that's one of the problems oh, that true. I find working on these things, is that Joe hacked it, Charlie hacked it, uh, Joe and Charlie hacked uh, Jim's car, and before you know it, it's just a mess, and they're getting more and more difficult to figure out what somebody did in order to correct the problem. Right, you have to you have to correct the problem first before you can almost solve the problem. You have to go back to the beginning, put the car back to uh, in a condition that where it was, where it was close to stock, and then start from there to, to you know, bring it back to life. Right. Yeah. You know, guys, I have to disagree with Bronco on this one because the guys coming up are the computer, more computer generation savvy than we are. Mm. So they're the perfect guys to be doing interfaces with laptops and one whatnot. Would, one would hope. Yeah. More so than guys our age a lot. No, yeah, that's, that's why a lot of these manufacturers now have plug-and-play stuff that auto-learns. You don't right, have to these program. These kids are not working on the cars at an early age to understand the theory of operation. Right. Well, that, that right, thing so they're they, good they, with computers yeah. and stuff, but put yeah. the practical application to, aside from the theoretical process of it. They don't know what, which end of a screwdriver to use. You know, as you know, I taught yes. the vocational automotive for thirty-five years. Mm-hmm. By the time the nineties came, you couldn't get a kid, maybe one out of twenty-five kids, that had a remote interest in getting dirty, so to speak. Yeah, true. And then I see this generation now, uh, the grandkids and some of the kids that are in the neighborhood, I'm um, offering to pay these kids $10 to come and, you know, you want to learn how to change a tire, do an oil change, wax a car. No, why should I? Right? And they'll sit there and they'll play with their little iPods and their little laptops, and mm-hmm. you can't get motivated. Yep. And that's the problem yeah. is that we're not training kids to go into the trades. They're all training how to push buttons. Very and true. I think that's where we're lacking. So I do agree with you in that respect, but disagree with you in the other respect. Yeah, on a large scale, I agree with that problem. That's a, definitely a big problem because mm-hmm. I think everybody's looking towards, they look at industry trends, they look at business trends, mm-hmm. and yeah, it's not really... And it doesn't help that the car companies anymore. don't offer any repair service at, at all. I mean, even Joe D will attest it gets harder and harder to find information on how to repair vehicles. Yeah, that's right. true. And then yeah. also look at the schools. I blame the school system because they're dropping all the trades. They're mm-hmm. dropping the shops out sure. of the schools to make everything computers. Right. Everybody walks around with a computer. Because everybody uh, wants to be an actor. Uh, an actor. I work. They build stages right, now, Steve. Or a video game maker. Yeah, they want to be, uh, you know, network operators and things God. like that. God. So I get a real job. super rap star, that kind of thing. <laughs> right. Yeah. But before I go, let me give you a real fast, funny story. Okay, because we're, we're going to take a break. Go ahead. 
Okay, real fast. Uh, when I was teaching, a kid comes into my class, and this was like in the late 90s with the little zipper head cars. Mm-hmm. And, oh, man, I'm all upset. I just got a ticket for no tail light. So I said, oh, no big deal. You know, I got certification. We'll fix the light, whatever it is, sign you off, bring the ticket in, and get it washed. So he goes, no, no, you don't understand. I don't have a tail light. I said, relax, Paul, relax. Mm-hmm. He had one of these big, giant boombox stereos. Right. So I go around the back of the car with the vibration and the buzz box and literally vibrated the tail light assembly out of the car. <laughs> it literally had no tail light. <laughs> it was just a wire there with two, just that a broken a wire. <laughs> big hole in the trunk. Uh, so take it for what it's worth. That's where we're heading to. And I that's a few it. car clubs. <laughs> well, anyway, guys, you have a great week. I'll cook up to you. Right? And Thank you, bro. Look on your car shows. You got to keep them coming. That's the best thing in the world for this generation. You betcha. Enjoy. All righty. We'll talk right, to you bro. real soon. Take care. Take care. Bye bye. Five one six five seven two seven four four zero is the phone number. Billy Velvichaccio from the Retro Garage is here with us in the studio. We were expecting a phone call. We got him in the flesh. Now, if you can only talk. <laughs> 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 Also, we have the Motormouth Radio Honor Group of the Hour. People who never use their parking brake. I'm on Long Island. Why use it? There are no hills. And if that's the case, pat yourself on the back. You're part of the Motormouth Radio Honor Group of the Hour. Ray Guarino, I'm Chris Switzer. When we come back, Ray, I have to admit I have a problem. It's a reoccurring problem. I'm a little ashamed. But I have to admit it's spreading. You want us to list the ones that you probably have? <laughs> no. Oh. But I'm going to have to admit I got an issue. When we All come right. back, we'll talk about it right here on Motormouth Radio. <laughs> you lucky dogs. Whether your car is fast or slow, we're your number one radio show. Motormouth Radio, baby. Ow. WHPC Garden City, New York. The voice of Nassau Community College. <laughs> Join WHPC's Daily News Wrap-Up, weekdays at 4.30 p.m., bringing you a complete report of the day's news home and abroad, as well as sports, weather, and many other informative features. We're Long Island's FM Alternative. In olden days, a glimpse of stocking. Hey, join me, Lise Avery, Friday afternoons at 3 for Anything Goes. You never know what you'll hear on Anything Goes. It's a mix of standards, jazz, and classic pop with lots of information about your favorite artists, interviews, and contests. Expect the unexpected on Anything Goes. Fridays at 3 p.m. right here on 90.3 WHPC, the radio voice of Nassau Community College. Anything Goes. Hey! Excuse me. Motormouth Radio. All righty. Welcome back to Motormouth Radio. Well, we have Phil Giaccio from the Retro Garage here with us in the studio. Ray Guarino. I'm Chris Switzer. 516-572-7440. There's your phone number. That gets a hold of us if you have a question about your car, like Rob Leonard always tells us. Sub it out his car. 516-572-7440. There's your phone number. <laughs> So when we took a break, we were all happy. I know. I have a confession. Ray, I have a sticky steering wheel again. Mm-hmm. <gasps> My wheel is sticky, Ray. Which car? Pathfinder. In the Pathfinder. And it's worse. Did we go through this in the past with that car? I know we went through it with something. Ray, my shifter knob is sticky as yeah. well. You know what? Well, yeah, okay. <gasps> I got gotcha. you. Why? Why? It's outgassing. <laughs> We we talked about this in the past, Bill. And you remember the wheel that was on? It was actually on the uh, Z28 Camaros. It was a four-spoke black rubber wheel with a big rubber. Right. Vega GTs had right. it. I have three of those, and I've used them in a number of my cars. And in the summer, they would get very sticky. Right. And I looked into it, and people said, yeah, it's the same thing. The oils come out of the plastic. The only thing I found to really to keep it at bay the longest was I would take a rag and spray the damn thing with brake clean. And, and really wipe it down, and that would work for a long time. This is not a plastic wheel. It's a leather-wrapped wheel. Leather. Yeah. So it's the oil out of your skin, I guess. Uh, it's either Mine that was or, coming out of the rubber. It's either that or the Dunkin' well, Donuts. So they say it's leather. It could be... Uh, leather. It could be, yeah. it could yeah. be pleather, yeah. yeah. So I'm a little, a little uh, leery of using the brake cleaner Ray Guarino method. 
Yeah. Which you can actually see a video of on the Motormouth really? Radio channel. Oh, yeah. It's one of our popular videos That's on YouTube. That's an old one. Yeah. yeah How it's popular? Got, it's got about... Uh, Two hits? It's got about 8,000 oh. hits. No, no. It's got about, about 2,000 hits. Wow. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I know we did it years ago. I didn't remember. St- someone's typing in sticky steering wheel, and, I guess. and you come up. Maybe you should. You've probably been doing it to figure out how to <laughs> yeah, fix your I, car. I know that feeling, though. It's kind of like if a steering wheel could have pus. That's the feeling <laughs> yeah. you're getting in your hand. Oh, God. I'll tell you this. In my <laughs> Mazda, <laughs> yeah. in my, I have a leather wrap wheel, leather shifter, but the end of my uh, directional stalk, just the end part of it. That Just your tip? I know if I go out there today and touch it, it'll be a little yeah. gummy. You, you like have sticky. a sticky tip? When the weather is dry and it's not, and it's, it's not humid, it is not sticky. <gasps> wow. Oh, the plot thickens. Let's go yeah. to the... Or stickies. Let's go to the phones. Let's go to the fun. How are you on with the motor mounts? Hey, doesn't that Pathfinder have like 300 billion miles on it? <laughs> yeah. Isn't it entitled to be sticky with that amount of mileage? We got Cliff Roadrunner on the phone. <laughs> Cliffy, what's happening, brother? How are you? Nothing. No, all good. All good. I, I, I want to say I fell into that honor group of the day because I've never used my my uh, parking brake you ever. Use, you never use uh, it, but now I use it. I use it with the Roadrunner because it's a stick. Okay. Good, 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 good. But you know, you but, should use it every once in a while. It keeps it limber. You know, it keeps it. It, it keeps it. I from guess I don't. Up. I don't use it so much that I'm afraid that if I do use it... <laughs> you can end up with it in your hand. <laughs> it'll, yes. You know, I mean, some of these new cars now, I guess automatically, you know, the, the, the brakes go off when you put it in drive. But I can remember, like, a lot of old cars, a couple of times that I did use it, and like, you know, wow, this car's really dragging, you know? Yeah. It's really dragging. I'm getting like three miles. I'm on the LIE. Oh, oh wait a second. Emergency <laughs> brakes on. You know, I probably like took 20,000 miles off those pads. You so know? I'll, I'll give you a piece of history. I had a 65 Caddy that had a vacuum actuated parking brake. When I put yep. the car in out of park, the parking brake came off in 1965. My 60- That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. My 64 had it. My right. 63 had it. Yeah. I, you know, when I first got the car, I'm trying to figure out how to release it. Like, there was no handle. Oh, yeah. I was like, what? Oh, yeah. there's a handle. I don't remember having. There's a right handle right it under under hidden. the dash. It's yeah. under the dash. But the problem is, you have to stand back because you let that thing go, and you're under the dash. It comes up, hits you right at the bottom of the floor, oh, the, the, right in the forearm, smacks you right there. The, the pedal, pedal. Yeah. the pedal, the, the pedal part of it. Yeah. They have them in all weird kind of spots now, like on on the new cat. My wife's the the SRX. It's like a button on the on the console. Oh wow! But uh, yeah, I'll tell you a funny thing with parking brakes. The cars I drive typically, you know, my Mazda, my wife's Mazda, new cars have you know you have the parking brake in the middle on sure. the console. Mm-hmm. I've been driving my Pontiac, and I find myself going for the parking brake yeah. when I stop. I'm like, no, it's not there. <laughs> it's uh, all- you still like the, the old ones where you actually pull them out, like on the handle. Yeah. You know, like oh, yeah, like yeah, I got yeah. my '57 Chevy, Chevy that I had. I had the nice thing. I remember it was even an option was a chrome handle That's that right. was in the option booklet. That's right. right. You right. Know? It was a big uh, ratchet. That's true. Yeah. You had to twist it and push it back and it in was, again. And that bracket was held it? on the dash with clutch head screws. Yes. It looks like a butterfly. Yep. Yeah. That's wow. a clutch head screw that holds them on. Well, just want to let you know there are people out here on this rainy day listening to you guys. Who? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't beside you. <laughs> Thanks, We're getting Cliff. strong signal all the way uh all the way up here in Jericho, turn by at 135. So awesome. <laughs> All right. You're doing good. Thanks so Thanks. much, Cliff. We'll talk to you soon. All right, fellas. Have Bye-bye. a good one. You too. Bye-bye. <laughs> 516-572-7440 is the phone number. Billy's with us. Billy Belvin is with us. It's awesome. So, so I want to get back to like yeah. the toys. I know there was some, some lineage to the, to the car show, how it changed over the years. So what was the next milestone in the show? Uh, well, I, actually, there was. It, was well, it became a show. Actually, it was never a car. It was never a car show. It was a block party. It right? was a block party. Yeah. And then uh, one of the uh, one of the elder uh, members approached me uh, like ninety nine. He said, "Billy, he said, we're looking for new blood, new ideas to put into the field of Marine Club." So he said, Do you, you know, we're, we're, can you come to a meeting?" I said, "I do have an idea." Right. So I said there were a lot of nice cars in the area. Mm. Uh, oh, there I ever. said I'm gonna ins- I'm gonna create. I, I started a cruise night uh, in '99, and I said, you know what? I'm gonna take the cruise night and I'm gonna incorporate it. Take, yeah. Take it. Tell everybody we're doing a car show. Mm-hmm. Is that the beloved cruise night that we've been attending recently? I. S- that's the one uh, that that grew out of my show. Okay. I. You know, when you you start these cruise nights, you kind of like you're the shepherd. So it meant mm-hmm. making an appearance. And we were doing it Friday night. We were at St. Luke's parking lot okay. over in Whitestone. So uh, you showed up. 
you got everybody mustered up. So you had a, you gave up your Friday nights. So then I, mm-hmm. when I was approached by one of the guys from Whitestone Hot Rod Association, Kenny Chico, Kenny asked me, Billy, he said, can uh, we do a cruise night Saturday night? I said, Kenny, we could do a cruise night, you know, any night of the week. Mm-hmm. I said, but you know what? I'm going to segue out. So I said, you you take it over. Bill's always looking for that for that segue <laughs> spot. That's <laughs> smart. And, Back uh, door's always always yeah. right. Yeah. right, yeah. right, right, I said, right if out. I can get out. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, my wife at the time was having some health issues, right, and right. so so just Kenny said. Uh, but I said, Kenny, it's a gimmick. You have to have a gimmick. When I was running it. We used to ch- have cruise dues. We charged three dollars at the gate. Cruise dues. Cruise dues. Okay, and then we would actually give them a, war- a trophy, ah. and we let the money roll over. and And once a month, then uh, we would uh, give hero or pizza to anybody that showed up. Oh, great! You know, we cool. take the cruise dues. So it was a not for profit, of course. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. And we make it work. T-shirts, trophies, and but you have to have a gimmick. People love the gimmick. Okay, mm-hmm. that's for sure. Like, you know, now the gimmick is great cars and great people at Cascarinos. So, yeah. you know, and I've had some of the best pizza I've ever had in my life over there so far. Uh, in fact, as my as my um, doctor always says, why do guys have pictures of food and and cars in their phone? That's Cascarinos veggie pizza, Correct. by the way. <laughs> which is, did I show you that, Chris? Well, it's good. absolutely off the Very hook. Very nice. Well, of course. I need a knife and fork for that slice of pizza. Yeah. I mean, that thing is a mama look of a slice of pizza. And I think uh, Vinny Cody over there at, uh, at Cascarinos in Whitestone. A nice uh, pizza. Oh, it's good. I can tent, taste it now. Plug in 10th Avenue, 154 4th Street. I think right. Kenny also takes, uh, 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 Vinny takes something off the bill also. So nice, yeah. I think it's a 10%. I think it's 10, right, right. right. Yeah, you nice. have to have the gimmick. The gimmick is what people come back. It's 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 what I do with the Malba show. I judged it. I had committee judging. I had secret judging. Mm. Guys just like the tangible. They don't, they say, Billy, yeah, I did peer judging, Billy. Do I have to go around and, and look at cars and vote? Mm-hmm. I just want to come and hang out and do nothing. Okay. <laughs> I give it a, part- a participation, an entrance trophy. First 150 right. cars, you get a four-inch trophy with the logo. You get a dash plaque. It's $25 at the gate, whether you pre-register, post-register. We used to give the food away, but uh-huh. the old Italian expression, multi people would show up. Oh, yeah. Right, right, right. right. So, uh, <laughs> we said, you know what? Change. Trends have changed. We have to charge. And there was Nominal. the other the other expression, a gavon. Gavons. Right. They so. would show up too. Right. With or, their hands and plates. Or like know. the medicons oh, would say, yeah. car phone. Right. Right. The medicons. <laughs> That's right. So it's a lot. It's a lot of bang for the buck. I yeah. feel. And plus, you you know the uh, it, it's a good cause. People say, gee, why are we putting that much money into the community? And you're not putting it into the community. We the money rolls over. We. We we give money to the Whitestone Volunteer Ambulance Corps. Nice. You know, we Lions International. So, you know, we zero it out at the end of the year. Yeah, it's nice. You Very know. good. You know, years ago when I was part of the Three Old Cranks doing a show, we did the same thing. We didn't want to judge it because I would have had to judge it. And I said, no. So we gave out brass dash plaques that also had the image of the T-shirts for that year on them. And we sold the shirts, of course. But people got that when they came in the gate. Mm-hmm. We said, this means when you want to leave, it was Father's Day. When you want to leave, you can leave. You want to leave in a half Correct. hour? You want to leave in five hours? You no, know, you're not and held and waiting for a and that's, and that's a good point now. I find the trends with these shows, it's like it's almost like ADD kicks in. Uh-huh. That I do the show. I'm there at 7 in the morning, and the show officially starts where we close the gates when the field is full, or 1030, whichever comes first. Do the official kickoff for the event at noon with the Pledge of Allegiance introductions, and we go to 5 o'clock. I find the trend now is 3 o'clock, yeah. people are ready to pack, call it a day. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, there's a lot of things going on. There's a lot know? of things going on. No, you know, stuff with your kids or family. Or whatever. Right. That is true. And, and, yeah, and it's a great show. We're going to talk a little bit more about it right yeah. here on Motormouth Radio. Where are we here? That's we not it. <laughs> we got to find music. That's not it. Let's try that. There's music. I love live radio. Bill Giaccio, here with us from the Retro Garage, talking about the Malba Show that's happening this Sunday. Ray Guarino, I'm Chris Switzer. You can hear this show on Performance Motorsports Network. You can also hear it on iHeartRadio. Are we proud of those? You betcha we are, because they're crazy enough to put this program on their fine, standing network, which is really quite large on their part. <laughs> So when we come back, we've got a lot more Bill Giaccio and uh, Malba, Malba Show. We want to talk about uh, gimmicks, more gimmicks. 
that we can uh, dig up for the show right here on Motormouth Radio. Keep it where you got it. Have a question about your car or someone else's car? Then give the Motormouths a call, 516-572-7440. This is Glenn DeMiltz. Join me every Tuesday and Saturday afternoon at 5 for two big hours of music and memories with the chairman of the board. It's Frank Sinatra on Sinatra Serenade. Each week, we'll take you on a musical journey through the career of this entertainment icon. It's all about old blue eyes. So listen to Sinatra Serenade on WHPC 90.3, the radio voice of Nassau Community College. Streaming online at ncc.edu slash WHPC. Hi, this is Butch Patrick, and you're listening to the Motormouth Radio, just like me. All righty. Welcome back to Motormouth Radio. We're going to have that man on uh, along yeah. with uh, the soon-to-be-in-studio Butch Patrick. Yes, uh, later on this month with Pat you. Priest. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun, so keep it right here to Motormouth Radio. All the good stuff is happening in the next couple of weeks. And the good stuff is here right now. Bill Giaccio from the Retro Garage talking about the Malva Show. Ray Guarino, I'm Chris Switzer. Talking about gimmicks, Bill, you, you have mentioned the, the way you give trophies out have you ever thought about i always wanted to do this i always wanted to do like trophies for the best chair that that guys bring to put next to their car or 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 the best hairdo or the best hat we saw one at cascarino's two weeks ago what joe and i happened to see this fellow a gentleman sat in his folding chair and it literally just collapsed <laughs> under his weight he was like flat out on the ground and everybody gr- comes around and just looked, you know, and then, <laughs> and then, you know, somebody, I think Kenny, like, actually went to help him up and he, and he got up, so. See, that's, that's worthy of a trophy to me at a car show. <laughs> there's, there's, there's some action going on. It was action, all right. <laughs> <laughs> but that's always something that, that I've always wanted to do. I always, always like a car show that's not static, that, that's somewhat. But in, in your case, the Malba show is kind of in a unique situation because it's done in a neighborhood. So the neighbors are involved in it as well, I'm assuming, right? How do you, how do you uh, get past that? You know, I, uh, you know I, I file for a permit every year, and I file for even a sound permit for the DJ. Sure. And people say, well, Bill, why do you file for the permits? I said, because there are people that really don't like yeah. the event. It's an inconvenience. Mm-hmm. So have I, I, I actually in the past have been inspected by the battalion chief to see my permit wow. that they want to look at my egress points that I'm not blocking the lanes because right. somebody calls to make a complaint. Right. So, uh, so the, the, the point is that, uh, there were people, I, I could have 450 cars there. No problem. The only thing is I'd be blown out of the neighborhood mm. and, and, and you know, the, the setting there, 150 cars, everybody stays within that waterfront area. Mm-hmm. Right. If I was just chasing the dollar, I would be putting cars up on the hill, and then it's in all fairness to the attendee, that car's not getting any attention. Yeah, and it's not about greed; it's about quality. Yeah, you know? mm-hmm. and 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 sometimes you have to keep it small, right. and uh, keep the quality level high. Yeah. And right. the quality shows. It's one. It's really a, oh, yeah. a great that's show to attend. That's the beauty of it. That there are car owners that say, "Bill, I don't go any place but the Malibu show because it's just yeah." Yeah. Well, you know, I don't do car shows. I'm not a car show guy. I'll attend yeah. them. You know, we've attended them for the show and all, but I like cruise nights because I like to hang out with guys. And I, and I always right. said two shows I would actually bring my car to is the Long Island GTO show mm-hmm. and your show. Correct. Thank you. It's a, it's a brain, and that cruise nights it. are a brainstorming session. It's, oh, yeah. Hell yeah. You pick up a lot. Uh, yeah. You know. yeah that, that's what makes that show almost intriguing is the fact that it's in a, such, a, such a location that if you're going to, going to that show for the first time like I did a couple of years ago... You're in someone's neighborhood. You're thinking there's a parking lot yeah. here. There's where's right. the parking lot? Everybody, where do I the, park? Where's it? Right, <laughs> everybody's looking for a parking lot. Where's the parking lot? It's not on a parking lot. It's on a street, and a very pretty street, uh, no less. Let's go to the phones. Back to the fun. How you run with the motor mouths? Hello, Chris. Hello, Professor Ray. Hello, Joey D. This is Howie. How are you? <laughs> ready, ready, Ray. Three, yeah. two, one. It's the <laughs> clueless man. Oh, Howie, the big man. Yes. Wait, 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 wait. What's you, up, Parmigiana? What are you doing? What am I doing, man? I'm just uh, taking it easy today, man. And uh, I can't believe the rain today, man. It's like, it's, man, it, this is, man. It's, 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 suppo- it's rain, supposed to cats rain. And it's supposed to rain. and everything. It's supposed to rain. It's part of life. Yes. Hey, but it's hey, but it's it's, it's heavier. We needed it, mm-hmm. bro. 
Well, you may need it. I don't. If it's up to me, it would not rain at all. Well, you, you don't Just care about the Bronx. Just Bronc in Nevada I, yeah. with the rocks and the dust <laughs> right. and, and, the, and the decrepit weather stripping. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. I'll take okay. the rain. I'll take it. Believe me. Yeah. So, man, what's new and exciting, guys? Well, aren't you been listening to the show? No. No? Just called it. Right. Well, why don't you go over to the radio and turn it on? And no, not now. Don't turn it on now. <laughs> right. Don't Too many people do I that. I won't turn it on now because then I'll get that echo. Right. At least you know that. So you haven't been listening to the show. We've been talking no, about I, you the whole hour. What, what, what show is this? You know, is, is this the, uh, the, the grocery yes, show? It's the gardening it's the, show, uh, yes. It's a, yeah, the, it's a uh, show. How to do laundry? Right. Exactly. You know, you're just spiraling it to the ground, Howie, like you always do. All right. Well, hey. It's going to be an exciting weekend this weekend. You know that. Yeah, why is that? Why is that? Well, there is, let's see, it's the beginning of the Jewish holiday. Okay, that's also exciting. Beaming Get together with, with the fam. There. Yes, we, yes, we're all beaming with the excitement. Yes, go ahead. Well, the exciting thing for myself on every Sunday morning, if I get a chance to go to OBI, it's really exciting. It's very nice to go there. You see a lot of my friends, a lot of my Pontiac friends, Cadillac friends there. Some of my Corvette friends are there, too. and yes. it's nice. But I'll tell you this. The last two Tuesdays, I was at Oyster Bay, and it was great. Oi! Okay. Yes. Oyster Bay. It was, uh, it was loaded. It was uh, music going. Who was uh, loaded? The cars were uh, was loaded, probably, about, uh, probably about 150 cars there. Yeah, that's a premier show. That's uh, you know, Figgy runs out one up there. That's the, uh, the Gold Coast Cruises. That's yes. a fantastic cruise night. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, Gold Coast Cruises. I was there in uh, in Glen Cove uh, when they had their show. Okay, well, you know, and that was it. That was also exciting. It was a uh, iffy as weather. As this phone call, yes. Yeah, well, iffy weather. That's all. <laughs> but hey, but you know, it was exciting to 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 be there. My friends, uh, Fred in the Gold Coast uh, Cruises, great guy. He's okay. also a big caddy guy too. Ah, okay. Does that mean he's a large man, or he's just interested well, in fickle. Cadillac? He's just interested in Cadillac. Oh, okay. That's but, good. But Morgan Park is a great venue. It's a beautiful location on the north shore of Long Island in Glen Cove. It's kind of like a thing like you have, Bill. Because, of course, we have Bill, Bill Giaccio in the studio with us today, Howie. Uh, Chris, uh, how, uh, yeah, who's his name? Joe will be back on Sunday. Sorry, Joe. I couldn't think of his name for a second. Uh, and, you know, like your show, Bill, where it's, it's, you know, it's a tight community thing. Morgan Park is the same thing. It's, it's a yes. very restricted and figure run they, the guys up there run a very good show they do it they could do a good they restrict it to a amount of cars and whatnot uh they just have a bigger venue than than you have but also with the water right right i also had the pleasure of uh of meeting uh dennis gage at the show oh and did he walk I up a to picture you? i should send it to you <laughs> yes we'll definitely put it on the front page of something yeah, I know, I know, mm-hmm. and uh, it was uh, it, it, like I said, it was uh, it was a nice show, uh, beautiful venue, uh, vendors there, uh, the people there. It was just a, a nice, you know, a, a nice place to go. Well, thank you, Howie. That's been highly fascinating. And we're well, anyway, so welcome back, Professor Ray. Thanks, Howie. Yeah, that that was about the best thing you said all day. And I'll be right. out again on Sunday, so you can <laughs> say that again next week when I come back again. All righty, Bubbolo, we're going to let you go because you sound very well. busy. Hey, everybody, hey, keep dry today. Yes. Hey, stay well and happy motoring. Right. Thanks, Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 516-572-7440. Hopefully we can drag the show back out of the mud. <laughs> I don't know where we left off, but I, I, I at, the, at the, you know, the... the for nothing else, for change of topic, to bring something up else, Bill, I know you were at Car- Corvettes at Carlisle uh, a week or so ago. Met my good friend Tom, one of my, one of my oldest and long-timest friends, Tom from Lycoa. He's the current president. And uh, I, we were talking about trends, like you said, trends in the car right. show. People want to leave earlier. And you talked about trends with car guys at Carlisle, and I, I'd like for you to bring that up because I thought it was an interesting topic. Yeah. But for starters, uh, Tom and Gino, they're having their show this Sunday, Long Island Corvette owners at the VA hospital. Mm-hmm. Up in Northport, so right. give them a plug, and they apologize that Bill, we can't participate. I said no, Gino, it works out great. We're in the um, room for you. That yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. You know, it's nice to spread it around. Yes. But anyway, yes. Uh, the trend that I, I'm starting to see is uh, people go to Carlisle. The well, number one is the age. It's it's the age thing. Yeah. I, you know, I'll, I'll be 62. I'm like a baby walking around Carlisle. Uh, considering what some of the people are, mm-hmm. 
and they come early, and then it's kind of like being in Europe at one o'clock in Italy on a on an afternoon where the, <laughs> yeah. the town dries up. <laughs> they have a siesta. Everybody can feel a siesta, <laughs> and then they stay two or three days because of the heat or because it's just too much. Yeah. Right. And and the crowd isn't what it used to be. Well, they want to get the early bird special at Bob's uh, <laughs> Big Bird or whatever it is. Yeah. What it, crowd's not what it used to be. And yeah. then the vendors yeah. aren't really what they used to be. I, I noticed yeah. something about sales tax issues, but uh-huh. but it's just that it, it, you feel like the 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 crowd is starting to dissipate as far as the interest. In yeah, so like what Bronx said, yeah, we're seeing that, that as we bring the hobby with us forward, there's no one filling it in from the back end. Yes. I think that's exactly what he was illustrating. It's I think true. It, yeah, it's true. I can shed a little light on this. Uh, I always say the death of all the car swap meets, like uh, the granddaddy, like Car- uh, Carlisle, Carlisle Hershey, yeah. 20 years ago, those were the place to go to get in all your parts that you needed. I think what's eviscerating those events is things like eBay and all of those. Yeah. Well, that's a good point, Chris, because the other thing is what you're seeing, what they're selling, and you're saying, I can open up the catalog and go, go online. True. And why am I buying it? You know, there's different stages when you purchase a part. Yeah. There's off the off the lawn, off the off, off the, the lawn, off the lawn, off the, tarp. Off the top, right. off the table, or off the computer, <laughs> yeah. or out of a box, or off the out of the but computer, you know, or out of the catalog. I, right. I got to tell you this: the guys I talk to at cruise nights and shows that are all around our age, they all seem to have the same feeling. Like I'd rather go and. and Pick it up and, and myself too. I'd rather I want yeah, to see it, right. hold it, and maybe haggle with the guy, and, and then you can decide. Well, you know what? Maybe the repro isn't doing it. Maybe I'll go with a good original. And, and you can't do that when you're on eBay. Now I've bought and sold no. on eBay, and, and yeah, and there's nothing. Got a place. There is nothing like finding that part in in a field Absolutely. somewhere. The, right. There's nothing like it when you, that the the joy. That exuberance when you say, oh, here it is, yeah. you know, and now you're, uh, now you're trying to be cool. And, and I have the guy selling it doesn't know what it is, so right. I can get it for five bucks. Well, the, the secret there is I would go to uh, a fall or spring Carlisle, and I bought my Corvette, my one I had the 66, I bought my hardtop there. Wow. Wow. As opposed to going to Carlisle, Corvette to Carlisle, and buying a hot Oh, top. sure, sure. sure. A big difference in right. the spreading the price. Oh, totally. Uh, yeah, that's, absolutely. That's the first thing. And then. Uh, the second thing is when you go in person, my favorite line is, listen, where, where are you from? Yeah, you turn the table. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from Kansas. All right, listen, uh, you got to lug this back to Kansas on Sunday right. afternoon or you want to give me you want to give me Sunday's price Friday, you know, Friday morning. Everybody has their line. <laughs> that's, why Chris, we, that's why we call them Velvet. Yeah. You know, Chris, I know you have a line. It's like, I'll give you two bucks. Oh, yeah. You're asking 300 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I always feel there's always got to be one vendor you yeah. have to blatantly out and out insult. Yeah. You just have to insult at least one guy. He starts with the people taking the, the money in the game. <laughs> you know, my line is always, how much you want for this? And then they'll pitch them like, yeah, you know, my, my friend, my best friend is looking for this. My cousin's looking for it. I'm going to go find him and, and ask him, you know. And then right. I use like that third party is like I'm uh-huh. negotiating a deal in the middle. Like, you know what? I, I really can't go over so much because, you know, I'm spending his money here. Yeah. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> there, was, there was a guy many years ago at Englishtown. I had, at the time, I had an old electric convertible, and it had fender skirts on it. And I always was concerned about losing one on the highway. So I always was looking for a, se- a second set, just to leave hanging on the garage wall. No big deal. So I would walk past this one guy, and he always had a set of 68 Buick Electra fender skirts, always sitting there. And I walked up to him, and I would say, i give you 10 bucks for them. And he would say, no, I don't want them, but I want like 25 at the time, whatever it was. And for, I would say, a good five years of fall and spring English towns, I would always find a guy, he'd be in the same spot every time, and I'd always walk up to him and go, 10 bucks! <laughs> Finally, the you last know? year, he threw them at me. He was like, give me the yeah. money, here, take that damn I, I used Bill's guy. technique in English town uh, once, and there was a guy who had a, a, pi- uh, a vacuum gauge for an Oldsmobile, hangs under mm-hmm. the dash. I, was I with still you. have it. I was with you that time. Yeah, and it was in a plastic bag, and you could see, you know, and I, I think he wanted 60 bucks or something. And I offered him something like 20 or 25 And he didn't want to take it. And I, I walked away. And, and he called me back. And we're trying to negotiate. I said, you know what? How long has it been in that bag? Because he had stuff in, in, in wooden bins. And he says, yeah, you know, it's been a while. I said, I can tell. You've been carting this thing back and forth. <laughs> and he let it go for whatever I offered him. It was something paltry, like 25 bucks or whatever. Right. So now I have it sitting in that bag <laughs> in the desk drawer. So, you know, we just, we just change ownership. We just, like, move things around in the cosmos. <laughs> That's for sure. Five one six five seven two seven four four zero. If you want to hear 
the smooth pitch of Billy Velvet Giaggio from the Retro Garage <laughs> talking about swap meets and uh, how they're changing over the years. Ray Guarino, I'm Chris Switzer, and of course, the Motormouth Radio on the Group of the Hour people like Cliff who never used their parking brakes. Where, where, where would you wedge a water bottle uh, since the cup holder is filled with you know, loose change? You've got to wedge it somewhere. Wedge it in, uh, in the emergency <laughs> brake. But Cliff asked me, why do we call Bill Billy, you know, Billy Velvet? And I said, he said, it sounds like a, like a good fellow thing. I said, no, it's actually Billy was in Reservoir Dogs. So you had Mr. Pink, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. White, Mr. Velvet. <laughs> <Mr. Bell. laughs> More with Billy coming up right here on Motormouth Radio. Keep it where you got it. The Motormouths will be right back with your car questions. Give us a call at 516-572-7440. WHBC 90.3, the radio voice of Nassau Community College, is looking for individuals, businesses, charities, or organizations in our local global community that would like to donate to support our radio station. Whether you listen locally or online, here's how it works. Go to our webpage at ncc.edu slash whpc and click Donate Now. Or if you prefer, you can send a check to WHBC Radio, One Education Drive, Garden City, New York, 11530. Make your check payable to the NCC Foundation. In the memo of your check, write WHBC, Donate Now. Any contribution will help defray our operating costs and it's tax deductible. This message was brought to you by the radio voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHBC. Streaming online at ncc.edu slash WHBC. Your car not running right? Let the motor mouse help you out at 516-572-7440. Come on, Billy. We're going to go uh, choose sides. Uh, a little stick ball right in the street. We're going to sing doo-wop in the, ba- in the, uh, in the hallway because <laughs> of that goes, too. If we split the Spaldine in half, then we'll play half ball. I got to tell you, I was in a, I was in a hotel this weekend. Uh, my wife and I stayed in a hotel. And one of the things that I had to run down to the car, and I took the stairs instead of waiting for the stupid elevator it takes forever. Sure. And I got in the stairwell, I'm like, wow, I just heard my feet make the noise, I'm like, and I belted a little out in the stairway. And I said, this <laughs> oh, sounds yeah. great, man, where's my recording? <laughs> no. Not that I can sing, mind you, you know. But. What was the song you were singing? Aldiva. You know, oh, no, yeah. I can't. Aldiva? <laughs> uh-huh. ah, yeah. <laughs> anyway. No. Nothing with a little do 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 Yeah, sha na na sha na na Yeah, a little bit of that. No, I didn't need Bowser. Five one six five seven two seven four four zero. If you want to reminisce, that's the phone number to get a hold of us. Billy Velvet Giaccio from the uh, Retro Garage here with us talking about. How was there anything uh, exciting going on with the garage other than uh, fantastic shows that you put on yearly? You know, I, uh, I I I do this. You know, I'm talking about the swap meet as a as a as a buyer. I'm also a seller. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, had some success with that. And, but the thing is, brokering, uh, I've been brokering a couple of cars, car deals, right. uh, and uh, then of course uh, we just had that run, that piece with Alana in Hot Rod Magazine. Yeah, and the, uh, and the online stuff. blog. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. that was big stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's like anything else. You have to commit. Once you commit, you have to keep going. And uh, right now I'm. Uh, you know, it's I'm at that stage. Of retro garage waves all fees and commissions. I, it's a mm. matter of tax ramifications. So <laughs> there's nothing coming in, nothing going out. Right. But I will put buyers and sellers and people together. I wanted to talk about your, if we can, a little bit about your Corvette project. That's that's in in great shape and now your your newest acquisition yeah Yeah, we spoke about it before but i don't know if you want to get into either one of them but if you do feel free the corvette's done the corvette will make its debut sunday in fact i just put the license plates on it this morning ah Uh, license plates license plates now you know people don't realize what you personally go through where license plates are concerned i do and i've related to chris and it is daunting Mm. it's like a whole nother science behind license plates there is yeah yeah but that's good. We'll see the vet. Yeah, the vets there have uh, vanity plate on that. And then, the, so the new acquisition is I purchased, this is my my sixth one. Yeah. I, I bought an, a, a Generation 3 Nova. Generation 3 Nova was 68 to 72. Right. I bought a 69. Aren't you yeah. tired of them yet? Uh, it's like a oh, heroin no. needle in my arm. Oh, like, my God. Like, Come here, Billy. Billy, come back. <laughs> yeah. So Beautiful I, car. I, I, it's triple black. Wow. Yes. Original uh, wow. trim tag, tuxedo black car, mm. uh, vinyl top. 
black interior, SS package, SS car, 350, 300, four bolt, first year of the four bolt main, first mm -hmm. year of the disc brakes in the front. Uh, three, uh, 355 posi, 12 bolt All right. uh, shifter. Gauge package. Gauge package. Mm. It's a seat belt and 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 uh, door buzzers intact. Correct. It, it a reverse lockout. Yeah. Holy smokes. Yeah, that little plastic trim piece inside the console when you shift and you see the the, the little plastic tab still in there. Uh -huh. Where did you find this little? I went online. From? I went online and and I have to you know the plug. Mike Rinalis out there with Weeby Auto has a terrific website. Mm -hmm. And uh, I saw the car and spoke to Mike, made an offer. Mike said, Bill, you're a little light on the number. He said, I can come down to this. So Mike came down. And then we went, I said, Mike, instead of you and me going back and forth, I said, can I contact the owner direct? So I did. A Staten Island gentleman, Sal, great guy. Uh, and Sal and I. Did you ask him where he was from? <laughs> How rare is that? A guy named Sal in Staten Island. Sal in Staten Island. <laughs> but Sal, Sal's a good guy. Sal said, Billy, I get a lot of calls on the car. I don't need any tire kickers. I said, Sal, yeah. I'm no tire kicker. I have a couple of concerns. He told me what my concerns were, right. certain parts of the car. I said, I said, Billy, it's all done, 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 done. So I scared the S out of the bejesus out of him. I showed up with cash and the flatbed. <laughs> and the flatbed, Ooh, yeah. That's the, the way car. to do it. Wow. Uh -huh. and I, uh, that's velvet with an iron yeah. fist. So we were talking earlier off the air. The car was restored, but there's in the Generation 3 series, 68 to 72, there's actually an AB. 68 69, the trim is one way. Mm -hmm. 70 to 72, the trim is the second way. Yeah. So the car was restored, but as anal as I am, I never make any money in this business, that the car had a 70 to 72 grill in it, brand new. How I, did you find that, by the way? The, uh, that it had the wrong grill. How when, did I, you? when I looked at the car. You just really looked. Okay, so you knew it then. Yeah, there's okay. 19 uh, vertical right. ribs versus 9 on the 68-69. Right, wow. right. No who's going to know that, but uh, that's, no. So, that's double, yeah, double the so, amount, so it's obvious. So I have swap meat material to yeah, sell. Right, right. You right. Know, <laughs> and, and stuff to buy. Yeah. Wow. So I just gave the car a facelift over the weekend. I took the... The front filler panel for the mm -hmm. bumper to the grill, oh. that was painted the tuxedo black yeah. also. Right. It should be argent silver. It looked good in black, wheels. too. Yeah, I, but I put the the new grill, the new, and okay. then it had the wrong SS emblem on the grill. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be the shape of the SS. 16, was that an 69. A and B thing also? A, B thing. Okay. Correct. So we gotcha. made that change. We put, put the new filler panel in, re realigned the bumper. Uh, just... Uh, Car needs nothing other than, mm -hmm. you know, a new brake release handle. Yeah. Good. That's, that's the type of work I like. Yeah. I, I can go all day on, on stuff like that. I love yeah. that type of work. I'm gonna I'm gonna treat myself. <laughs> I, I, my children are gonna treat me to a set of red lines for the nice. car. Nice. Very for, cool. For, and, yeah. You know, and me, I find like the you know, brake release handle. Yeah, that's in that box over yeah. there. <laughs> right. It's like what box? Yeah, that that box under the other three boxes. Like, yeah, that's the yeah. stuff that I get into. Is like everything is in boxes. But it's like not the brake release handle doesn't sweat. You know, let's say no. vinyl, but it, what happens is they, they have a tendency of getting light. They get whitish. Yes. yes. They get a little... The plastic. Know, the yeah. plastic. Yeah, it gets like chalky. Yeah. But you can hit that with chalky. some black, you know, some yeah. conditioner and bring the black back. Sure. Yeah, so it's another swap meat piece. I put yeah. it... So, Billy, how does it feel to be like almost, uh, like, uh, how would you call it, like the, the official greeter for the East Coast when it comes down to Hot Rod Magazine? I mean, when they, they want to come to these cars, yeah. they call you. That was, you know, Alana did that last year. Mm -hmm. I think it was the April-May edition of Hot Rod mm -hmm. when she said, if you go east, you have to make sure you stop and see Billy Giaccio yeah. with the Malba car show. It's yeah. one of the top, things, top ten things to do going east. That's yeah. a high not praise. Not too, not too shabby at all. That's not too shabby. high yeah. praise. And then this year uh, in the, on the blog site, she wanted to make sure she got it out before the Malba show. She gave it a plug yeah. and... Uh, Basically, it's a tribute to the car guys. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was at Belmore with Steve and some other, and Vic and the guys, and I happened to leave right behind Tracy and Steve. Tracy was driving a Tempest with open headers, and I just, like, crude cell phone videos. I got a picture of him starting the car, and I got a couple of videos driving behind him. And I sent them out to Alana. Chris has them as well. We're going to put them on our site. Yeah. And she's going to use them. She's going to put them up on yeah. the... Because it just looks so cool seeing that car on the highway. Absolutely. So... 
Before we wrap this up, let's talk a little bit about any information anybody wants on the Malba show. How would they be able to get a hold of you, and how would they be able to get there? Okay, uh, the show is Sunday. Uh, right now, weather-wise, depending on who you listen to, who you watch, it's uh, it's chance of showers. So showers is not considered rain. I'm thinking you have so, you have uh, well, friends in high places. We're all ahead. It's it's a green light. I mean, yeah. the infrastructure we're committed, so we're going right. ahead. Uh, we're there all day. If it showers in the morning, we'll be there. Mm-hmm. It's it's just water. I, I know we all get crazy. I have one show wipers. But it's uh, on the Malba waterfront. Uh, if you want to put it into your your uh, your uh, map quest, use the uh, 32 Boulevard. B O U L E V A R D is the address. It'll take you right there. It's Malba Drive between Boulevard and Point Crescent. The gates open up at 7:30. The show mm-hmm. officially kicks off at 10.30 with the cars. We go all day. And the contact is uh, WGG3449 at AOL.com. And the cell number is 917-767-7340. But for everybody listening out there, we're, we're a green light for Sunday. Don't be scared off by uh, the threat of a shower. Uh, we're going to try to move the show if it showers in the afternoon, we'll, like I said, we'll give the awards out a little earlier. And yeah. uh, mm-hmm. under an umbrella. But we appreciate everybody's participation as always, and we appreciate uh, what the Motormouth Radio does to promote the show also. So thank you, gentlemen. We do our best, and, a, and we enjoy being there too. A pleasure to be here today. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Bill. It's always a pleasure. You're always welcome to the studio. You know yes, that. very much so. You're always welcome here. In fact, I mean, if you and Joe come in, Chris and I'll both take them. <laughs> <laughs> you guys How's can, that? You guys can do this, Joe. No problem. Joe sees what I do behind the board. Listen, he can do this. God, God bless Joe. I mean, sit next. I'm the, like the jack of all trades, master and none. I mean, you want to talk about? You want to make small talk? We'll make small talk. But yeah. technical stuff. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. You know what? Talk to my buddy Joe. You got it. You know, with the computer, laptop, and the plug-in. That's, that's He's our Ob Ob Don Canoli. That's right. And you've known him a long time, Joey, haven't like you? Like I said, you know, Joey. I know you're out there, buddy. Altar boys at Holy Trinity. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Latin. <laughs> Latin. That's quite a history. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> <That's laughs> me. So Ray, Ray, what are we doing for uh, the next couple of weeks here? Well, Sunday you'll be in with Joe because I'll be out with Bill. Yes. Next week we're open, and then coming up after that we're going to have. Uh, well, actually Sunday you're going to be busy because you're going to be interviewing. Either Brian Nevin, who is who is Ed Mangano's right hand, his his PR guy, you'll probably be interviewing Ed Mangano himself, the Nassau County uh, uh, Chief Honcho in charge, about his cruise to the show, which is coming up on the 26th and 27th. So this uh, Sunday, you and Joe have some uh, have some tough duty to do. You got to pull off a, an intelligent, cognizant interview with the county executive. So Uh-oh. don't let me down because I'm going to be listening. Yeah, exactly. And I'm sure Brian's going to get back to me like, "Hey, <laughs> who the hell were those boats?" So you guys will do a good job, I'm sure. <laughs> for, for Ray Guarino, <laughs> wow, I'm all Chris right, Switzer. Well, I'm go. really going to be cracking my no nuts. Pre- no pressure. No <laughs> pressure at all. Hold up the high standards here. Uh, I'm Chris Switzer, and of course. The best advice we always give on this program, other than the fact that you'll hear us on Sunday, is don't follow us home. See ya! Bye. From a town near Oyster Bay, Long Island, comes the show devoted to the music of Long Island's own Billy Joel. This is Piano Man on 90.3 FM, WHPC, Garden City, New York.